So as I said, today we start uh, the Millions book. I put some thought if we should do the introduction or go straight to chapter one. And that thought lasts about 55 milliseconds because we know as a student that the introduction of any and all book should be a part of the studies when we truly want to understand the content of the message. And especially when you read Kardec, to bypass the, the, the introduction is, it's, it's really a missed opportunity. He brings revelations, he brings very, a very direct um, objectives and guidelines of what this, his, his, this work is all about and what we should gain from it. And doing my little preparation to present this book, I, I heard a little bit of um, Sueli Caldas, for those who, who do, not want, do not know her, she's a wonderful, wonderful spiritist, reader, writer. Given and uh, she's, she's the grandmother of Umberto, who's going to speak on Saturday. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah, and she was giving a talk about the Mirman's book. And in about an hour, 58 minutes of lecture, she spent one quarter of the time talking about only the introduction. So the book has like 60 chapters, and she spent about one quarter of the whole lecture talking about the introduction. I also heard uh, Devout Pereira Franco talking about the, the, the Minos book on TV program, a spiritual TV program. And he spent about half of the, of the time talking about the introduction of this book. Yeah. And if those guys do that, I must follow through <laughs> with them as well. So the, intro, so the book, was, was, was published first time in January of 1861. It is a book that basically is the second part of the, of the, the, the Spirit's book, the part that deals with the scientific aspect, so to say, of the doctrine without um, neglecting the moral aspects of it, because in spiritual mediumship with Jesus is the, is the theme. Kardec dignifies mediumship in this book, bringing exactly that, a scientific approach to it. Reminding that mediumship exists as long as human being existed throughout humanity. And if up to Kardec, and unfortunately still these days, it's something quite on the arena of the mystic, in the arena of the supernatural, of the black magic, Kardec brings it to the natural. Mm -hmm. Bring this to a scientific as aspect of it, which digni dignifies uh, mediumship and the mediums uh, themselves. Um, in our, or at least the, the book that, that I use, the edition that I use, has um, a profession of the translators, which I'll bypass because it's already everything that I say here, including Anna, Anna Blackwell preface of her, uh, of her translation. I also going to bypass because everything that she says here is already in the introduction. And just to minimize the length of time that we spend on it, uh, I will bypass, but I suggest that uh, if the editions that you have have those two things, that you go ahead and, 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 and read it. One important thing, that it doesn't show in very little very few people know, is that this book also has a subtitle. And as I keep saying, when you just finished Heaven and Hell, the subtitle is more important than the title itself. Mm. Divine, divine Laws According to Spiritism. This book also has a subtitle. 
And this, uh, this, so the name of the book is The Medium's Book or Guide to Mediums and Evokers, which it leaves very clear to us here that it is a more experimental, a more hands-on approach of the doctrine. Not saying that the moral aspect is not a hands-on, they should also be, it should perhaps be more important. But here we will receive guides, as it says over here, guides to mediums and evokers on how to use this instrument. As consider uh, the talent of mediumship being another instrument placed in our hands to better ourselves, to better those around us. And indirectly, the evokers and all the workers of a, now we can say, a mediumship meeting, we will also be dealing di direct and indirectly with the, the talent of mediumship. Reminding, reminding everyone that we are all mediums in, of course, in a much low, a, a small grade, if you have to grade gradated uh, levels of mediumship, that the ones that we will consider being an ostensive, the ones who have that open window, so to say, to the spiritual dimension in which they can have a, a more palpable interaction of, of hearing, of seeing, of, of being able to express the thoughts of, of spirits, discarnate spirits, through speech or through writing or through painting. And we're going to cover all those types of mediumship in, in, in this book. Um, so today, 6-11, 2020, a, a mark of year makes go on and see how long it takes us to finish this. Um, I hope it's going to take a long time because that means that there will be great participation and questions and discussions which enrich the story for everyone. If you finish it too fast, it's probably because you just read it without really studying it. So, so are you going to do it well for us? Yes. Yes. Okay. Introduction. Good. Okay. Each and every day, experience confirms our opinion that the difficulties and disappointments encountered in practice of spiritism result from ignorance of the sciences principles. We are happy to notice that the work we have done to protect its adherence against the pitfalls of, the be of being a notate has been effective and that many have avoided them by reading this work. Thank you. So just the very first paragraph, uh, we're not gonna stop every paragraph, every paragraph, I promise you. But here, kind of like, very clear in one paragraph, he puts very clearly what is the objective of this book. Uh, I wanna mention something that I should have said before, that the book, the, the book was published in 1861. The Spirit's book was published in 57. Between this time, Kardec was extremely busy. Well, he started the, the Spiritist magazine and, and he was answering many questions through that, mostly through that, to, to that um, magazine. But he also have read, have read, have developed a small booklet um, to guide uh, mediums. And when he reviewed that small book booklet, he noted that it was quite incomplete and, and there was many, many things in there that was necessary, were not necessary to be there because they, they were already in the Spirit's book. There's a lot of repetition uh, in that booklet of things that was already in the Spirit's book. So he chose to revise. He, he started with, with the intention to revise that small booklet. That is actually, uh, okay, uh, people can actually get it, whoever is interested, a uh, guide to, to mediums. In the, the, the development, the, rev the revision of that little booklet, he ended up making this, the, the mediums book. 
So what started to be a simple revision of some guidance to mediums end up being this book with 60 chapters, basically. Okay. Um, and here in this very paragraph, he leaves clearly what is the objective of the work, okay? Um, number one objective, to dismissify because it's, uh, it uses science. Number two, to provide knowledge. Number, number three, to protect. There's three things that Kardec does over here in this book. He eliminates the mystical, he eliminates the tells and applies science. He provides knowledge and through providing knowledge, he creates protection. He protects mediums. He protects those who are associated with mediumship. Those could be uh, victimized by having this talent and not knowing what to do with that. You know, it's, it's like have the talent winning the lottery today, $150 million, they have no idea what to do with that money. Most likely you're gonna get in trouble. It's a wonderful talent to have in, in, in your hand. It's a wonderful monetary power to have in your hand. But if you don't have the proper guidance, if not, prepared to manage that talent, there's a good chance that you're gonna get yourself in trouble. And the same thing with most of the talents, most of the things with all things that are really good, they have the potential of being hazard if not properly used. And mediumship, of course, is one of those things. Okay. 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 It is quite natural for those who have concerned themselves with spiritism is to desire to personally communicate with spirits. This work is intended to facilitate their journey, enabling them to take advantage of the fruits of our long and laborious studies. For it would be quite erroneous for someone to assume that in order to become an expert on the subject, it is enough to simply learn how to place his or her fingers upon a table to make it turn, or to pick up a pencil to make it right. One would be equally mistaken to expect to find in this work a universal and infallible re recipe for training mediums. Although everyone already possesses the necessary inner sea qualities for becoming a medium, such qualities express themselves in varying degrees, and developing them depends on causes that are outside the human will. The rules of po poetry, painting, and music do not make people poets, painters, or musicians if they do not have the gift in the first place. Such rules only guide them as they use their natural abilities. The same applies to this work. This pur its purpose is to indicate the means of developing the faculty of mediumship according to each one's abilities, and especially to guide the use of the faculty advantageously when it is present. This is not our sole objective, however. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For every student or every, of any and all science, you want to apply what you learn. You want to put it to work. It is very normal once you introduce yourself in the, in, in this new doctrine, this new science of spiritism, that you have a normal curiosity. Am I a medium? Am I able to do what other people are doing, receiving spirits and writing that spirits writing through me? It's a very normal curiosity, only to perhaps to want to experience how does it feel to having my physical instrument, my physical body being used by another mind. Mm -hmm. And it's a very normal and, and I think um, good curiosity that we all, we all have naturally. Uh, and, and have that intention to, to be medium or be test oneself to see if kind of to become 
if you have the potential to be mediums, not, not only for a normal good curiosity, but could be for a negative curiosity as well. But um, intention to interact of loved ones that we miss that are now in the spiritual world uh, could be for reasons of they want to be at service. Um, that is my way to contribute uh, for, for the goodness of, of, of humanity. If I can interact with spirits and console them and uh, and talk to them and and whatever, but of course could be for the wrong reasons as well. So Kardec says it, uh, it is quite natural for those who have concerned themselves with spiritism to, des to desire to personally communicate with spirits. Again, uh, and, and then he says later on, but you must prepare yourself, okay? It's not enough to simply learn how to place his or her fingers upon a table to make it turn or to pick up a pencil to make it right. In the beginning of, of mediumship, most of the work was done through the physical phenomena. That's why he says over here, you know, to put his or her fingers upon a table and we're going to understand, learn later what is physical phenomena, what is this process of ectop ectoplasmic effect, or to or pick up a pencil and, and, and make it right. That mediumship is much more than that. This, this mediumship is, is much more than this mechanical phenomena. It's much more complex than that, and Kardec went to explain everything in it here. And then he says, you would, one would be mistaken to expect to find in this book a universal and infallible re uh, recipe for training mediums. Two things, this is not a cookbook. This is not something that you that you pick up on the shelf and if you wanna if you wanna bake a bread as long as you have the right ingredients, or as long as you have the right uh, oven that offers you the right temperature, you can make a anyone can make it. Mediumship has a a natural organic component. It is something that we have been prepared. And, and again, I'm talking about the more extensive mediumship, okay? Not the inspirational mediumship that we all have, okay? We can all interact with spirits at a, at a lesser degree, or they, otherwise it would have make no sense for us to have a protecting, a guiding spirit with us at all time, if we could not receive his or her inspiration and guidance, right? So we, we all have a little bit of, of mediumship, but we talk mostly here of ostensive mediumship. And just not to be saying this word all the time, every time that I say it's mediums, I, unless I specify, you're talking about ostensive mediums of any kind of mediumship. Okay, being seeing mediums, hearing mediums, writing mediums, speaking mediums, uh, mediums of of uh, that kept the paints, music that writes music, or and and any of those those are uh, ostensive mediums. Okay, those ostensive mediums that Kardec lives here have an already a organic disposition, have already been prepared to do something with that talent, with that instrument. It's not placed in your hand to just as a, an appendices. It's an instrument of work for us to put it to work. Okay, uh, so he says over here, although everyone already possesses the necessary inner six qualities for becoming a medium, such qualities express themselves in varying degrees. That's why I say you are all mediums, but I don't, lowest degree most of us. And the development then depends on causes that are outside of the human will. So the things that had already, already been prepared for us in, the, uh, in our pre-reincarnation plan, as I like to say it, uh, we are 
already prepared to do it. We already have that organic disposition that we don't know exactly, our science, our science cannot still explain exactly what is it in our physical body that allow us to open up ourselves to the spiritual world of that, if you would say an extrasensorial thing that allow us to com communicate with the spiritual world. Um, most of the research points to the pineal gland that we're going to discuss later. But we already have that something that allow us to, to become an extensive medium or to be an extensive medium. And those qualities, that instrument can be developed. Okay, that's a word that is unfortunately still disputed. Okay, some say you cannot develop your, your, your mediumship. No, Kadak saying here, right in the beginning, the introduction, as you can develop it. Right. Okay, it's the same way that someone who has a talent to play in the piano, if it doesn't sit there and do the, how do you call those things, whatever they call those things, do the training, do the proper thing, we'll develop something that already has naturally. The same thing with mediumship. You have the seeds over there, but you, you must nurture that seed. You must practice, you must work, and you truly really educate yourself, educate your mediumship uh, most of the time. Yeah, there are exceptions. We're gonna cover those exceptions eventually. The, the mediumships that he, he has from behind and have no idea what to do it with, with, with it. But then we're going to discuss that, but that, those are the exceptions. We're going to talk to here mostly of the, the average for now, okay? Question, comments? Okay, let's go. Okay. Paragraph. Alongside mediums per se. Okay. Alongside mediums, per se, the number of individuals who are concerning themselves with spirit manifestations is increasing every day. To guide them in their observations, to point out the difficulties they could and certainly will meet in dealing with a new order of things, to initiate them into the matter, the manner of communicating with spirits, to indicate the means for receiving good communications, such as the scope we must embrace least our endeavor be incomplete. Thus, it should not seem surprising to encounter teachings in this work that at first may appear irrelevant. Experience will prove them to be useful. After studying this book very carefully, these individuals will better understand the incidents that are sure to witness, and the language of certain spirits will then seem less strange. Since it contains practical instruction, it is not aimed exclusively at mediums, but rather to all who wish to observe spirit phenomenon. Some would have had us publish a more succinct practical manual, indicating in a few words the techniques to follow in order to communicate with spirits. These spirits believe that due to its law, low cause, a book of this nature could be more profusely disseminated and would therefore be a powerful means of advertisement, which will then result in an increase in the number of mediums. However, we think that such a work might do more harm than good, at least for the time being. Spiritist practice is surrounded by many difficulties and it is not always exempt from problems, which only a serious and thorough study can prevent. Thus, we feel that a succinct exposition might facilitate frivolous experiences, and this would only lead to regret. These are matters that are neither appropriate nor prudent to be toyed with, and we believe that we would be doing a disservice to place them within reach of the first person frivolous enough to think it would be entertaining to talk to the dead. Instead, we will address ourselves to those who see a serious purpose in spiritism, who understand its great importance and who do not intend to make adherents who have resulted from simply reading the spirit's book. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. Yeah, I think you probably your last sentence is different from my uh, from my, but that's the, the same the same content. It's uh, it's just that I turned the page and she read the last uh, line of the other page. So who understand its great importance and who not do not and who do not intend to make communicate with the invisible world a mere pastime. Okay, so it's the same. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's on the top of it. Okay. Page, the following page. Mm -hmm. okay. So as I said before, um, many individuals are involved and concerned uh, with the practice of, of mediumship directly or indirectly, okay? And even if you will deal with mediumship on an indirect way, let's let's use an example of a mediumship meetings in which you have, let's assume 12 people, three mediums or four mediums, um, two dialoguers, two individuals that speak with the, with the spirits through one of the mediums at a time. And, and you have uh, all the, the other individuals um, assisting with vibration, providing the proper energy to maintain uh, the ambient propitious to assist those spirits. Everyone is being involved in mediumship, directly or indirectly. And anyone is at risk of dealing with the consequences of, of interact with spirits if it's not done in the proper way, if, it, if it's not done in the proper environment, it, if, it's, it, if it is done for the wrong reasons, so to say. Okay, and I'm going to cover all of, all of those um, in this book. And a very important, he says over here in the second paragraph that I read, one thing that you cannot do, and that's something that um, Julio always covers in his lectures, there is a very big risk that we take when we try to oversimplify, makes things way too very easy so everyone can understand running the risk of changing the content of that material or not offering the necessary content to, to teach that, that material. If something is hard by nature, it is hard by nature. Once you try to make it too simple, you degrade the quality of your presentation and people does not profit from it or even more worse, get the wrong ideas. So if you go into, let's say, study brain anatomy, because we, you, you want to be a neurosurgeon, you cannot simplify, you cannot make you no know, neurosurgery for dummies. It doesn't work. <laughs> That's funny. That's true. It doesn't oh work. God. At least I don't want to be a patient on the hands of the, on those oh neurosurgeons. The, the 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 material is hard. It's hard yeah. by nature, but it's doable. Mm. It's doable if some if someone did it. We can also do it. Maybe more difficult for one of us. So Kardec in this is make, is make sure that some people like us to, wrote, to write a simple booklet that is you no know, easy to read, that is entertaining and you know, that would be, would sell by the billions because everybody would enjoy it. But no, the, natu the nature of the study is different. You cannot oversimplify mediumship, putting people at risk. And some people say the Miro's book is hard. I think it is because it's, a, it's the most scientific aspect of the doctrine. It deals with um, 
things that our science cannot even explain yet. We have to have a good understand of perispirit, the relationship of perispirit with the spirit and with the physical matter. We have to, we have to understand the interchanging of thought between two perispirits and it may not be for everyone. But if you want to understand and if you want to work with mediumship, you're going to have to go through those hard things. And Kardec will not oversimplify, will not minimize something that cannot be minimized. Um, Joanna D'Angelo, I remember when um, Duvald Pereira Frank went to her uh, and, and asked and ask her, listen, sister, a lot of people is coming to me and and saying that you write you writing is too difficult to use some really difficult words and people are having a hard time reading you. Can't you make it a little bit easier for people to read? And she said, absolutely not. I mean, here in a position as as a teacher to teach, not to lower myself to the level of the student. I I have to write proper, eloquently, and those who are exactly. have the desire to understand, exactly. get a good dictionary and 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 and, and ele elevate themselves. Exactly. Right? Yes. So the same thing here, you cannot oversimplify something that is complex. It is complex by nature, um, and you have to deal with the complexity of the topic. Over Simplifying it will degrade and will not provide the, the necessary instructions for us to be efficient if you really want to use it properly. Okay. I have, I have a question. Sure. Yeah. No, I didn't want to ask nothing in introduction because it's too early, but <laughs> it was something that you said it got me curious. Um, you mentioned that, you know, mediumship uh, in this way that we're going to study is not for everyone. But uh, I also realized that even the studies of mediumship, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not judging no one, you know, you know, everyone can do whatever they want, but it seems that even the studies, people kind of, uh, they're not like, for lack of the better word, they're not attracted or interested in to understand more about mediumship per se. So, um, and then, you know, they love everything else, you know, uh, you know, the other studies and the passes and everything. But the, the mediumship, this, this one point, it seems that even in the spirits group, you see that, you know, Sometimes, you know, even even online, we have a big group and the first part and the second part, it drops. So first question would be, why do you think that happens? And second, can we be like in fully understanding of the, the doctrine without that part of them, you know, the spirit is? Okay. So if I said it's, it's not for everyone, the study of mediumship, I misspoke and uh, I didn't mean that. It is for everyone, um, but it requires some prerequisites. You know, it's the same way that if you, you know, if you go to register for a course in college, there is some prerequisites. You have to have, you know, math 101 before you can take math 303. Right, uh, here the, some prerequisites are required and Kardec strongly suggests and uh, that we have read the Spirit's book first. It follows that is a proper sequence that you kind of not understand in the Spirit's book because then none of us would be studying the Miriam's book. But I have a good, no, have, have read it, uh, have covered most of the topics at least, and I actually suggest for someone who uh, had not studied the spirit's book with, with us, go read the second part of the book that is um, is the spirit is the Minos book, just because the Minos book is more developed here. Why why studies the mediumship? 
uh, one, the whole doctrine is founded on, on mediumship. It was created by the spirits, by the discarded spirits. Uh, Kardec just put it in paper. No, let me take the just out of it. His, his work was amazing. But um, how can we validate the answers from the spirits to understand how does it come about? I understand that some people are not interested in that, and I like more the the um, the moral teachings is more is more into the gospel according to spiritism, and less interested on the phenomenon itself. But the the although we do divide the doctrine um, in the in the moral, the scientific, only for teaching reasons. It's one single doctrine. The same way that we divide our physical body into now the respiratory system, the, the, the renal system, and, uh, and, and, and the nervous system for didactics to make things easier for us to understand, you cannot take one apart. You take one apart, there is no more physical body alive, at least. The doctrine is, is the integration of philosophy, religiosity, or moral teachings, not religion, but religiosity, and the, all the moral teachings of, of, based on the teachings of Christ, and the scientific aspect. It is it's an integral thing. It's, it's very hard. We cannot break one apart. Um, and those who wants to understand uh, spirituals have to have a little understand of mediumship, although may not be interested in participate in a mediumship meeting, which is absolutely fine. So this is not for me. This is not something that I want to do. We had offered to some of our members who've been to us for a long time already, you know, to come and be a part of the mediumship meetings and say, nah, that's not for me. That's not one of my, my interests. And that's absolutely fine. There's absolutely no problem with that. But I have an understanding of what's happening in that meeting. Why, why do we do it? How we do it? Uh, how the, did Kardec receive those answers from the spirit supporting the spirit's book? How did Kardec uh, have that collection of cases that he put in, the, um, in heaven and hell? That's important. It's a part of the doctrine. If you take that one apart, then there is no more doctrine. The same way if you take one of the system in the physical body, there is no more physical body. It's integral. Everything's together. And, and this, in this, although this is a more practical experimental part of the doctrine, among the scientific aspect, we're going to see that the moral aspect, the teachings of Christ, is so integrated in, in, in this book that we cannot take the moral aspect out of this book as well. But it's something that we can just not separate, not be a part of. If one or another individual think, um, I don't want to deal with this book now, that's absolutely fine also. Tony has a question. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain better what uh, how do you differentiate religion from religiosity? What's the difference? Okay, so religion, I put religion as a uh, an institution that practices the religion that has a, 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 a body of, of administration and, and things like that. And the religiosity is something individual have you with yourself trying to really God, trying to reconnect with the divinity in, in on a on your own way. It may be through a religion, it may be through walking barefoot on on, on the grass and anything that, that you experience as a means of of reconnecting with the divinity, really Gary, with the divinity, not necessarily through a, 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 a specific religion. Uh, 
uh, you know, uh, Elmo, uh, Dacio Yandoli the other day was uh, saying something very interesting that uh, religion is your relationship with others. Spirituality is your relationship with God. And faith is your relationship with yourself. I thought it was very interesting. Mm, I like that. Yeah, they have to digest that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to think about. Yes. Yeah, they have to digest that very easy. slowly, ruminate yeah. it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. Do you do you understand? Uh, do you, say, well, you understand my point, um, Daniela? It's just that I find important to say that if I don't have, let's say, a religion per se, if I'm not a Catholic, if I'm not a, a Buddhist, I don't even know if Buddhism is a religion because there's no God in it. Uh, if I'm not uh, a Muslim, does it mean that I don't have means of religiosity, of reconnect, have that relationship with divinity? And I think, yes, I do. So that is my religiosity. Yeah, I was looking into the definition of both um, words. And I think you mean like there are, you know, two or three options. So it's a particular system of faith and worship. So that's what you mean, like having this system created that you end up being affiliated yourself. Without being affiliated, yes. Yeah, Correct. so religios religiosity, you don't have to be affiliated to a specific system, right? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Elmo. Yeah. Um, I just want to, uh, okay, let me just say, <clears throat> uh, I was thinking here, uh, the reason the question, because, you know, uh, when I start, uh, restart, let's put it that way, the spiritism here in the U.S., uh, I also one of those, was one of those that didn't want to, you know, get too involved in leadership. You know, I you know had an experience with my parents, and I was like, you know what? Let me stay out of this. Let me study spirits. It's good enough. You know, make myself a little better, and that's it. And uh, you guys know my story. You know, I've been mm -hmm. for almost four years straight there, and everything was nice and cool. And then <laughs> things start to get interesting, right? But the reason I'm saying this is. Um, I just want to make a point that I didn't know how much I was, uh, let me rephrase in a good way, uh, missing in a sense of learning and improving myself, leaving that part out of it, out of the studies, out of, uh, you know, incorporate that and, uh, and the spirit is. After, you know, I have to do, you know, whatever, and becoming more of a student of the mediumship that really took a turn on how I see spirit is and how I see things and how connect everything else, you know, spirits book, you know, all the books that we study because the simple reason that you just mentioned because everything, the foundation of everything is the mediumship. And sometimes I thought that I understood things, but I didn't because that, that ingredient was missing. So I just wanted to to say that to everyone uh, that might be considering to study and really to give a chance to go. I know sometimes it's scary because I've been there. <laughs> I know, but uh, don't worry. You have Elmo, have João, have Julio, have Josari, you're going ahead. So that's what I want to say. Yeah, but it's, I don't think you missed anything. You waste any time. I think it things happen at the right time and it's better when it happens this way than we precipitate things. It's more complicated, it's worse when we are so eager to get into it, I wanna do it, I wanna be a part of it and we're still not really mature enough in the studies, you not know, prepare enough and then you cannot deal with it, then it becomes something difficult for you to deal with and walk away from it. So things, happens at the right time, you should allow things to happen at the right time. Time is, you know, is the is God's greatest ally, right? When things things are 
at the proper time and it happens, don't run away from it, take it. And that's my suggestion, of course. And don't rush into it also. And that is one of the hardest things, I think, as for those who make the decisions of inviting or not invite someone to be a part of uh, the, the, the mediumship meetings is to calibrate, to calculate, to try to read uh, the individuals who are at that point, who are ready, who are matured enough in the stories to experience a mediumship meeting, those who should perhaps wait a little longer. Because it could, again, as I said at the beginning, it's, it could cause harm if not prepared for it. We had people who disappeared from our center after experiencing mediumship meetings, then they just took off. And I wonder if we precipitated the invitation, we will never know. Um, yeah, but the reading is that we did, right? Otherwise, yeah, we, we will, you know, not get it right all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, do we need more? Okay. We are there in the middle, sorry, that we had already. Yeah. We had already published. Okay, we had already published a practical instruction manual to guide medians, but it is now out of print. Although we printed it with an eminently serious and grave objective in mind, we will now reprint it since we did not find it complete enough to clear up all the difficulties that may be encountered. Therefore, we have replaced it with this book, in this work, in which we have gathered together all the data that it extensive experience and conscientious study have enabled us to acquire. We will hope that it will contribute towards showing the essentially serious character of spiritism and also toward dissipating the idea of frivolousness and entertainment. We will add one more important consideration. Meetings where experiments are performed lightly and without full knowledge of the facts arouse very bad impressions in no vices and ill-disposed individuals and cause the problems of conveying a very wrong idea about the world of spirits, thereby encouraging ridicule and providing well-founded grounds for criticism. That is why disbelievers rarely Relieve such Relief meetings. Relieve such meetings. Top, off the top of the page. Top of the page. I'm not. Uh, leave such meetings convinced and why they are little disposed to recognize in the serious side of spiritism. The ignorance and frivolousness of certain mediums has caused great harm to the opinion of many people than one might think. Okay. So. Thank you. Thanks, Araida. Continue or stop? No, I can stop here. Okay. Um, thanks. So as I have said before, Kardec had already, and between 57 and 61, uh, published this practical instructions manual to guide mediums. It's a small booklet that he felt the need to, to revise it. He, he understood there was a lot of things that was missing in the in, in it and in in, in the preparation in the work of revising that booklet instead he created this big book um, and in it Kadak leaves clear here he has the objective of protecting the mediums or protect those associated mediumship directly and indirectly. But he clearly says over here now that he also has the interest, interest of protecting the doctrine itself and protecting the integrity of the spirits as well. He wants to make sure that he will provide guidance for the 
exercise of, of mirrorship that dignifies it, that elimin eliminates all the frivolities, that eliminates all the vain curiosities, that eliminates all the, as Emmanuel says, bargaining with spirits and dignify it, it as something much more elevated than these mundane objectives of ours. In, in, in this book, and that's why I say the moral teachers is extremely integrated with the practical, with the experimental aspect that cannot be break apart. And you see that we say in spiritual mediumship with Jesus is exact to avoid to put the doctrine in the ridicule. The time of entertainment has passed. It was important to have senses in every corner of Paris and people playing with the spirits and people having the most mundane, vain quest for the spirits was important because that was the mean that they could show themselves up. Hmm. But once Kardec brings the doctrine, now the all the frivolity is extinguished. So much so that if you walk in Paris today, you're not gonna open, you're gonna see senses and basically nowhere in these days. Those who are only interested in the curiosity, those who are just interested in playing with the moving and dancing tables, they are gone. The serious work prevails with spiritism. In this book, Kardec has that objective of protecting your soul the quality of mediumship itself and protect the dignity of the doctrine. Do not allow it to become something mundane. Do not become something that you make bargains with spirits, as Emmanuel says. Okay. 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 We start a spiritism, right? Yeah, well, what time do we stop, Jean? Keep losing uh, we we have to stop in like five minutes. Oh, okay, good. Can I continue? Yes, please. Okay. Spiritism has made great progress in only a few years, but its greatest step occurred when it entered the field of philosophy, because since then it has been appreciated by the enlightened persons. Nowadays, it is no longer mere entertainment, but rather a doctrine, a doctrine that those who used to ridicule table turning no longer find amusing. Through our endeavors to bring it along and sustain it on such terrain, we are certain to win more dedicated adherents than through a large number of manifestations that may be open to abuse. We see evidence of this every day in the number of such adherents who have resulted from simply reading the Spirit's book. Okay, thanks. So I got to anticipate the paragraph with my talking before. But you remember that in, in 57, Kardec was invited to, to go to Seances and he would refuse the idea of wasting time with this thing of spirits until he noted that some of the individuals were invited to him deserved his consideration that it was Enlighted, uh, was enlightened, was eloquent, intellectual individuals. They would not give much attention to frivolity, so he decided to attend some of those seances. And once he got over there, he noticed that there was an intelligent answers coming from chairs and tables. And he said, "Well, as much as I know, chairs and tables do not have brains." does not have an ability to provide intelligent answers, do not have a nervous system to have any kind of sensibility. Therefore, um, an intelligent answer can only come from an intelligent being and it goes to research, go to study what was happening there. And in that process, it develops the doctrine and brings the the, the philosophy aspect of the, the doctrine, which attracted, attracted intellectuals. At that point on, it stops being 
a source of entertainment. At that point on, it stopped being a little circus that you go to, to eat popcorn and laugh. It becomes something serious and, and attract the intellectuals. And as I have said, just like discotheque was one time in every corner in New York City, now they all disappeared because they just got tired of it, doing something else. This, the science is for their, only for entertainment, only for curiosity, also vanished. And only what's serious, what brings this exactly that, the philosophical, the scientific and the religiosity aspect of it persists until today. And all those, all those three things are in the Spirit's book. So once the Spirit's book is published, it becomes something serious. Yeah. Okay. After having set forth the philosophical aspect of spiritual science in the Spirit's book, we offer in this work its practical aspect to those who wish to concern themselves with manifestations, whether on a personal basis or by observing the phenomenon they are called to observe. They will see in herein the obstacles that they may encounter and they will thus have the means to avoid them. Although this one follows the other, these two works are to a certain point independent of each other. But to whomever wishes to seriously delve into the subject, we recommend the Spirit's book be read first because it contains fundamental principles without which it may be difficult to understand some parts of this work. Again. Okay, yeah, let's stop here because I don't think I have time to continue anymore. Oh no, go ahead. Yeah, let's stop here. So as I have said before, um, putting together the Spirit's book, you went in a new, a new phase of humanity, basically. Now the promised consoler is here. Now the one that Jesus Christ promised to send had arrived. It's no longer a matter of entertainment. Now, in the, in the, spirit, in the, in the Spirit's book, he says over here the philosophy, but the Spirit's book we know has everything in it, right? The Spirit's book, each part of the Spirit's book is one of the books that we, of the codification. So there is the philosophical part in there. There is also the scientific part of there with the part two that makes this book. And of course, not everyone has, you know, as I answered ran out of questions, is immediately attracted to all parts at the same time, or one likes one thinks more or less. Uh, some people has more this scientific curiosity of have wants to understand better this relationship of spirit and matter and this ability of two bad spirits to interact to produce a phenomenon of psychography of psychophony. This is science. This is science. Okay. But how do you use it? That? How do you use for the good? How do you use it to make yourself better? This is moral. And this is philosophical. So it's a thing is integrating in one. We just we just read the, the first part of Know Thyself. We can, and uh, anyone who is participating in a mediumship meeting for quite some time, have identified, have ident identified oneself or one oneself's needs to improve or doing well also as well, giving yourself a tap on the back at times through communication of spirits. If you want to have the analytical mind, as uh, Daniela said, all of us had experienced moments in the, in the, in the leadership meeting, which you learn something about ourselves that you have not noticed not un, until that time. So there is many, many, many lessons to learn from leadership working with it directly and indirectly, but not, not everyone is equally interested in it. But to understand it is important.
Okay, you have any questions, comments before we go to the final prayer? Okay, does anybody want to do the final prayer? Not I'll be up to do it. I will do it, uh, Elmo. Huh? I will do it. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Oh, Heavenly Father. Jesus Christ, our spiritual benefactors, as we come to the end of our meeting here tonight, we thank you. We thank you for the understanding and all that we have taken with us now to understand much more of who we are, why we're here and where we're going. May we take all that we've learned today with us throughout the week keeping us focused with all that's going on around this planet Earth, but with prayers and understanding. We will understand much, much better. Keep ourselves in prayers throughout the week, our hearts full of understanding, patience, and without faith. We thank you, dear Lord. And with this in mind, we ask permission to close our meeting tonight. So be it, dear Father. So, so be it.